She watched him closely, waiting for the moment. With a forced smile, she waited for his face to drop or his eyes to fill with bewilderment. She waited as the world outside the suburban window sunk into eerie peace, and the world inside the TV turned to a storm of fear. Quick, turn the TV off, turn the radio down. He's only five. Don't let him think the air is danger, breath is danger, touch is danger. She watched, saw his features leap in excitement at a day off school. Another day. Another. Was that a week? Now two? Time running like a mudslide. She watched his short fingers prod the jam-smeared iPad, his pale legs stamp happy mud puddles in the lawn. Slowly, with stealth, she told him about the things changed and the things missing. No, the library's closed. No, the museum too. No, you can't see your cousins, can't play with your friends. No Sunday dinner at Grandma's. No, no Grandma. Not for now. Not for a while. It won't be forever. Smiling and willing her reassurances to take hold, like she might press them into his unblemished skin. And he'd frown slightly, nod, move on. To the next computer game, the next scrawl drawing, Glitter, glue, feathers, a Lego bridge across the bathroom, an obstacle course made from mummy's books, a boat made from boxes. Moving, moving, feet pummeling the carpet, voice trilling all day and half the evening until she longed for the predictable stresses of the office, until she stood inside exhausted, frightened moments and wanted to run, just run from the noise and energy and activity and demands, Play with me, sing with me, 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 me. She watched him enviously as the weeks piled up, as the heat deepened and the blue skies stretched. She watched as he built new worlds and shrugged off old ones. His little lithe self, ready to contort to any new shape, while she lay rigid at night, stunned by the pulling away of the ordinary, the loss of the sure, the comforting and the free. She wanted to punish him, wanted to send him to his room and make him sit and think and stay there until you care. Stay there until you know how to feel, until you know how to look at me and see my sadness. Can't you see me? Can't you see my sadness? She didn't say those things. She just watched him. In the mornings they jogged, each day the same demand, same routine, weaving together along the pavement, her striding ahead, then trotting on the spot as he ambled and chatted and so slowly caught up. That morning was the same as any other. Him running and grinning at cats and cars and waving to old ladies in their driveways. Grinning and running and squinting into sunlight. Then as she turned away to draw a breath of patience... That scream. She didn't see it, but she heard it. The thwack of his torso against the pavement and that agonised scream. Erupting from the bottom of his stomach, echoing off the pebble dash semis and asphalt drives. In an instant she was crouching beside him, cradling him, rubbing his hands. Where? Where is it? Tell me! Just breathe! His face pink and tight with suffering. Here gripping his left knee. Here! She tried to roll his trouser up, but as she touched his leg, he shrieked, and no amount of cooing and cuddling could quiet him. An hour later, he lay whimpering on the couch, still clutching his knee, saying, Don't, 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 don't! So when she finally peeled back the denim of his jeans, she was already wincing, readying herself for blood, inflammation, bruising. She looked at his pinched features, lips puckered, eyes clenched shut. She looked back to his knee. Not a swelling, not a graze, not a mark, nothing. And after tea as he huddled under cushions, giggling at the TV, 
She watched his pupils dance with cartoon colours, his hair curling baby soft around his ears. How does it feel now? He flashed her an impatient glance, irritated by the interruption. It hurts, he shrugged. It hurts. 